Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Quick History. Today we're going to be taking a look at James Simpson and his work on the development of chloroform. As always there's a free handout in the description below and make sure you click on subscribe if you'd like to see more GCSE history based revision content. Let's get into the details. The biggest barrier to improving surgery before James Simpson was pain. Because patients often felt the surgery being done to them, surgeons had to hire a large group of people to hold the patient down whilst the surgeon worked as quick as possible. The best surgeons were known for their speed. The quicker the operation, the less pain that the patient was in. Speed, however, was dangerous when it came to surgery as demonstrated with the famous case of Robert Liston. Robert Liston amputated a man's leg in just two and a half minutes, but was working so quick to alleviate the man's pain, he also accidentally chopped off the man's testicles. This led to the work of James Simpson, who was the Professor of Midwifery at Edinburgh University. He set about trying to alleviate pain during surgery, and in particular the pain felt by women during childbirth. In 1847, James Simpson and two of his colleagues sat around James Simpson's dining table experimenting with different chemicals to assess its effect on the body. After pouring chloroform into glass tumblers and inhaling the fumes, Simpson and his colleagues soon found themselves on the floor under the table and unconscious. Simpson noticed that whilst he was falling to the floor and hitting the floor, he didn't feel any pain. This might be of use during surgery. James Simpson very quickly began using chloroform in delivering children at his job at Edinburgh University. Surgeons soon followed in using in surgical procedures. However, there was some opposition to chloroform at first. First of all, with patients asleep, surgeons attempted much more dangerous surgical operations, which led to higher deaths. This is because anaesthetics and chloroform had absolutely no impact on germs in the air. The longer the body was exposed to germs in the air, the more infection in the body and the more likely that the patient would die. The second opposition came about from religious groups who opposed chloroform because they believed that pain should be experienced as it was a message from God and therefore should not be alleviated. It wasn't until 1853 when Queen Victoria had her eighth child under the influence of chloroform that chloroform was widely accepted for use by doctors in England. Join me in the next video where we're going to take a look at Ignaz Semmelweis and his work on hand washing. I'll see you there.